Georgia Peach here. I don't know if I'm going to continue to do this because I don't like the sound of my voice. Um, anyway, I just wanted to thank Keeper for this next clip that I am about to put together and throw out there to you. It is a doozy. So sit back and enjoy. All right, I'm ready on Newton. This is case number. <clears throat> two one four four six nine three zero one the people of the state of Michigan versus Christian little name is cut off on my docket and is not listed on the pre-sentence report um last name Newtson defendant is charged with one count of assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for sentencing. Appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Christina Ritter on behalf of the people, P number 83505. I also have the complainant witness present via Zoom this morning. Mr. Gray, unmute yourself and state your name for the court. Uh, Michael Gray. Michael Gray. Yes, sir, thank you. Mrs. Coleman. Good morning, Your Honor. For the record, Sterling Coleman, P43321, on behalf of Christian Knudsen. Uh, and we do agree to have this matter uh, heard today by way of Zoom. Mr. Knudsen, state your name for me. Unmute, Mr. Knudsen. Yes, it's Christian Appleby Knudsen. Knudsen. I knew it. I was thinking that. And then I said, did I make that up in my own mind that it was Knudsen? But no, you said Knudsen. That's what it was. And I was going to say it, but I went with the other thing. So anyway, Knudsen. All right. So today is the day set for sentencing. The court has had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report. And with respect, <clears throat> excuse me, with respect to the report itself, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections on behalf of the people? Judge, the people had an opportunity to review the consensus report. I don't see any additions, deletions, or corrections at this time. And are there any on behalf of the defense? Judge, uh, Mr. Knudsen and I uh, reviewed this report. And uh, uh, Christian, I would ask you to verify that there are no additions, deletions, or corrections to the report that we, we reviewed. Am I correct? That's correct, um, Mr. All right. With respect to sentencing, then, is there anything on behalf of the people? So, Judge, I do have the complaining witness um, here via Zoom this morning. And... I would defer to Mr. Gray if he would like to make a victim impact statement. But before I get to that, Judge, just noting that I see there was a recommendation for nine months of probation from the probation department. Um, I, I'll leave it in the court's discretion whether um, to take that term of probation into consideration. However, Judge, I'm looking at the substance use and treatment section on page six. Um, and just looking at the history um, provided by probation and seeing where Mr. Knudsen is placed today, I believe that would address the people's um, concern for um, some type of drug treatment program. Um, so at this time, Judge, I'll leave in the court's discretion if the court would like to um, do some type of mental health evaluation, just looking at the history um, in the comments on page five. But other than that, Judge, I'm sorry, on page six, but other than that, Judge, I would uh, turn over to Mr. Gray if he would like to make a victim impact statement for the court this morning. Mr. Gray, would you like to make a statement to the court? Yes, ma'am. Um... I'm just totally really pushed back and baffled and disappointed in the way this is turning out. 
And the reason I'm saying this, I'm just a man trying to go to work, take care of my family to the best of my abilities and buy and buy by the law. I am so heated right now. I'm, I'm serious. I'm just being honest. I am so heated right now as a man that I took the high road and this guy is about to get a slap on the wrist, but nine months probation. If I, if I, a man, me being a black man, if I would have even did touch somebody, I would be facing years, years. If I knew this was going to go like this, I would have took a totally different route and beat the brakes off this man. This man took his hands and grabbed my stuff for no reason. It put my stuff in a vice. My, I'm still having pain up to this day. I done lost over $50,000. $50,000 because of this guy being an animal. He trying to just grab my private parts because he's a homosexual. And I don't play that. And I kept asking the man, don't do that. Stop, stop. Don't do that. And when the police finally came, the police came, they were sitting there for 15 minutes. It took them 30 minutes to get, 15 minutes to get there. And when they was there, they sat there for 15 minutes while I'm battling with this guy, trying to keep him from grabbing my stuff. You know how much strength it takes to hold a person and fight them off for 30 minutes? It's exhausting. And then when the police finally came, I was hollering for them. They just sitting there looking. They just sitting there looking. And then when they finally came, guess who they treated like they was the criminal? They treated me like the criminal, hollering at me. And this guy, this guy, and started putting on the caring act, crime. And they treating me like I'm the damn criminal. They treating me like I'm the criminal. I never seen nothing like this before in my life. I am so disappointed. I had even wrote the police deport the police department a letter and gave it to them, and they just looked at the letter, shaking their head about the conduct of how these officers act when when they got there. They hollering and screaming at me and pick him up like he's like he's a victim and take him to the damn ambulance. Excuse my French. I'm just yeah, let, let me say this, Mr. Gray. I don't mind you making a statement, but you can't you can't use profanity. That's why I said, excuse me, ma'am. I didn't mean that. I, I really didn't mean that. I don't, I don't have no disrespect for you, the court, or anybody in this courtroom. I'm just upset because I'm trying to do the right thing, and this guy's getting slapped on his wrist. If I look at a woman the wrong way or look at somebody the wrong way, they want to. Th they gonna want to throw the, the book at me. That's all what I'm saying. I just can't believe this. I can't believe this. Man, I wish I, wish I wouldn't even be looking at you right now. I'm telling you. Did you make me want to seriously? I, I, no, 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 Mr. Gray. We're going to be respectful. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for what you've been through. But not, I, I, not I, I, I understand. I, they want to respect me now, but when I was getting, when I was getting no, hurt, I wasn't getting respect. Mr. Gray, Mr. Gray, I wasn't there when you were getting hurt. I understand, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay, so I, I'm, that's all I, I got to say. That's okay. a, that's all I got to say. All right. That's all you. I got to say. No disrespect to you, ma'am. I apologize. I apologize, but as a man, you, you probably can't understand how I feel. Well, I can't because I'm never, I'm not a man. I've never been one and I don't ever want to be one. I, and I understand that. I understand that, ma'am. There's no disrespect to you. And of course, I'm sorry, but I'm just saying for this person to be sitting up here in my face, like nothing, nothing has happened. It, it's, it's ridiculous. And the charge that he's getting charged with is ridiculous. This guy needs to be on the sex offender list. He really needs to be on the sex offenders list. Because this ain't going to do nothing but escalate. What he's doing ain't nothing but escalating. And I'm telling you, I guarantee you, this stuff is going to come back one day where he's going to do something even worse. He's, a, he's an animal, a predator, a criminal. And anything else to go with it. You, you have no idea of what this guy used to do with this building. And he's been getting away with it for years. That's all I got to say, ma'am. That's all I got to say. Thank you for letting me voice my opinion, my, right. my, my concerns. You're welcome. Mr. Coleman, anything on behalf of the defense? Ms. Silman, I need you to call them back. I need, to, I need you to call them back. Okay, Judge. Thank you.
Um, anything on behalf of the defendant, Mr. Knutson? Uh, yeah, Judge, and and uh, certainly I wasn't there. Uh, so this is a, a very, when I read the report, I was disturbed. I was upset. But I live in the court. And when you say, and I shouldn't go off on this complaining witness, because I've been there, done that, seen it. Other people in this community attacked. And when you say you'd have been in jail, I don't think so, sir. Well, Mr. Coleman, I don't want you. Well, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm sorry, Judge. You're directing your comments to that. me. You're no, directing. I'm sorry, Judge. I, I apologize. All right. You know, but I'm just. Anyway, this this person, my client, has a drug problem and has had it for years, and clearly, he has done by way of the pre-sentence investigation. He's taking steps not only to get out the community, but to rehabilitate his life. Now, some people have mercy, some people don't. I'm asking for the court's mercy. Uh, I understand that the, 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 the anger of the complaining witness, but clearly Mr. Newton has a drug problem and has had it, it looks like virtually all of his adult life. But now he's in a inpatient substance abuse treatment. He's been there for the prior nine months. He got out of the way, the way he was living the city was living in, and in fact, moved him, removed himself to another state where we hope he's doing the right thing. Uh, so I would ask the court to adopt the recommendation of the uh, 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 sentence uh, 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 report uh, and uh, provide another chance, as we do for a lot of people. All right. And would Mr. Knutson like to make a statement on his own behalf? Sure, absolutely. I have a lot of thought into what I wanted to say this morning. And um, first of all, I want to apologize to Mr. Gray. Um, sir, it was a confluence of very bad circumstances that this happened in. Um, judge, I was being held on the ground for 30 minutes. And when I, when I reacted to that situation, I was simply, I, was simply, I think, emoting um, how horrible it was to be held on the ground by three men. And so this was not done in any kind of sexual way. It was done, it was, I think it was almost an instinctual um, response to that situation. Now, that being said, um, you know, Mr., Mr. Gray and I were friends actually. Uh, not friends. We were, we were, we were quite um, genteel with each other. And um, when this happened, I did attempt to apologize. I did attempt to um, say that I'm sorry for this situation. And um, he he would not have it. Um, I have put so much work into my sobriety. I've been sober over 15 months now. Um, I really turned my life around. I left Detroit. I got the heck out of there. Um, I'm living in Asheville, North Carolina right now in a sober living where I'm surrounded by really good people. Um, I get drug screened, you know, at least at least every week. Um, I have I'm actively searching for work. And I am and and can we if we just be honest, you know, I was the one who was taken to the hospital. My nose was broken. And, and I, I, I feel like the situation will be rectified by this, except the consequences for my actions for hurting him. And I would just like to, um, I would like to beg for your, uh, for your attention to the pre-sentencing investigation and hopefully 
um, this matter can be um, resolved. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning, Mr. Morgan. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Morgan, thank you for coming. I actually just realized that Mr. Knudsen is living outside of the state of Michigan. And so he's not going to be eligible. Okay. So okay. thank you, um, though. But I have a question for you since you're here. Yes, ma'am. I had another. Uh, would you be the person that would also interview if I needed someone for... Um, Oh, wait, no, that's not the person. They're not here yet. Okay, never mind. I had somebody I wanted to refer to sobriety court, but they're not here yet. Okay, Judge, yep. If you need me, I'm available. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Morgan. Yep. You have a great day. Stay safe. Thank you. And your staff. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, okay, so the court has had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence report. I'm ready to impose sentence. And I'm going to do so after making a few observations. So first of all, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know what was explained to Mr. Gray. However, no one should ever presume what I'm going to do. Nobody should ever presume what I'm going to do. I don't come to work to rubber stamp anybody. No, nobody. Right. That's number one. Number two, um, Mr. Gray's statements and his feelings, feelings are valid. They are valid feelings. Now his anger may be misplaced, but his feelings are valid. Um, and we live in a society, unfortunately, that on many occasions, law enforcement makes assumptions about people of color. And when they arrive to the scene of a place, they make assumptions about people of color. So we're not going to, um, to downplay the fact that when the law enforcement arrived to the scene that they may have perceived Mr. Gray to be the aggressor because it happens in too many occasions. It, it happens too often. Um, now, the anger that he feels with respect to the place that Mr. Knutson finds himself in today facing this court on the misdemeanor docket, it's, it's, it's misplaced towards the court um, and I don't know, even know if he expressed any frustration towards Ms. Ritter. That would be misplaced as well. Um, so obviously we know that the Wayne County prosecutor elected to serve the citizens of Wayne County is the individual who makes the decisions with respect to what a person is going to be charged with. Now, I'm almost 100% certain that uh, Madam Kim Worthy did not make the decision specifically on this particular case because there are individuals who work in different units of the prosecutor's office who make charging decisions. They make those decisions, I believe, and I, and I don't know for sure because I've never uh, officially worked for the prosecutor's office outside of doing an internship in law school. So I believe that they make those decisions in consultation with the police or at least with respect to the information provided to them by the police. So the frustration that you feel, and while you did say you wrote a letter to the police department, the, the letter was probably better directed to the prosecutor's office. So the prosecutor's office makes the decisions about how an individual is gonna be charged. And the reality that we face at this very moment is that Mr. Knutson was charged with a misdemeanor. Mr. Knutson's crime is punishable by only 93 days in the Wayne County Jail and up to $500 in fines for cost, up to two years probation. That is the reality that we sit in this morning as I decide what sentence I'm going to impose against Mr. Knutson. So while you may be correct, Mr. Gray, that had the situation been turned around, 
you would have been charged higher. So you may be correct. I don't know. You may have been charged with a felony. Mr. Knutson has not been charged with the felony. Nothing I do today is going to send Mr. Knutson to prison. Nothing I do today is going to send Mr. Knutson uh, away or put him on probation for five years or 10. Nothing that I can do today. Why? Because my authority under the law does not allow it. So your anger about how it's being handled, it is valid. It may be valid. It may be valid because we feel how we feel, but it is misplaced. It is misplaced. The individuals on this screen have not made any decisions with respect to how Mr. Knutson is going to be uh, charged. In fact, as we sit here today, Mr. Knutson pled guilty as charged. There was no reduction in his charge. There was no reduction. Uh, Ms. Ms. Ritter didn't make any special accommodations in terms of her negotiations. There was no deviation uh, to a disorderly person. None of those things occurred in this case. However, he has pled guilty to the maximum uh, and uh, thing that he was charged with, and that is assault and battery. So um, with respect to that, that is how we will proceed. Now, Mr. Knudsen, your actions were deplorable. Um, you admit in the pre-sentence investigation that you use uh, racial slurs. Um, you admitted that you broke windows and then you admitted to assaulting uh, Mr. Gray. Now, I'm not sure, again, why the prosecutor's office uh, chose to, to charge as they did, but they did. And it's their right and it's their prerogative. Um, and therefore, okay, that's another discussion. All right. So it's their right and it's their prerogative. So I'm looking at page four where he admitted to breaking the windows. I don't know whose windows he broke. I don't know what windows were, were broken, but there's no um, indication about any restitution for the windows in the pre-sentence investigation. So I don't know whose windows were broken. Then I also noted in, noticed in the pre-sentence investigation and by his words today, meaning Mr. Gray, um, it appears that on some level, there was some um, situation medically, I guess. However, on page four, he did indicate that he did not go to receive any medical attention. And therefore, anything, I guess, relating to that would have to be um, resolved if there was any civil litigation that came out of this situation. So, um, Mr. Knudsen, uh, I, I was happy to read in the pre-sentence investigation report that you have taken strides to um, <clears throat> address your sobriety, but your, your lack of sobriety your voluntary lack of sobriety is not an excuse for what you did uh, or what you may do. So the voluntary lack of sobriety. Now I know, I know people say medical, whatever, you know, at some point in life there was a movement <laughs> to label alcoholism as a disease. I know that that's what medical documentation say. And I'm not a doctor because I don't like blood and stuff. So I couldn't go to medical school. So I don't understand the inner workings of the body. But it appears to me that alcoholism is a voluntary state that people put themselves in. And then maybe because of their genetic makeup, maybe because of, you know, whatever genetics and, and things going on in the body, maybe that's what then triggers, you know, the, their inability to stop. So I don't know. And I don't want to know because 
they make you, you know, you have to draw blood and stuff when you go to medical school. Uh, so we're using that as an excuse as to what, what occurred. Uh, I don't know if people get stronger or weaker when they are intoxicated. I, I remember when I was growing up, when we had alcoholics in our family, I felt, I, I remember <laughs> um, them being easy, easy to tackle. I remember them being easier to tackle. Like if, if, you, if your drunk uncle came to the family reunion, you just, you know, it was easy to make them sit down because they were drunk and you could knock them down. This doesn't sound like it was so easy to, to hold down, Mr. Knutson. And that's why I don't know if it was because you were drunk or not, Mr. Knutson. It sounds like there was a, an intense struggle going on. But again, I'm not a medical person. I don't know. And I didn't ask any of my friends that are doctors. I didn't ask them, uh, but this is where we find ourselves. So um, I was going to attempt to refer Mr. Knutson to the specialty um, court based upon page six under the mental health portion of his report. Additionally, uh, the top portion of the sub sub substance abuse use and treatment portion of the report, I was very surprised that um, under the needs, uh, they indicate that the needs plus recommended intensive outpatient treatment, but then on page two, there was no recommendation for intensive outpatient treatment. So that confused me a little bit. Nonetheless, um, I am going to accept the recommendation from probation for probation, but not for nine months. So I'm not accepting the recommendation for nine months. I am um, going to impose the following terms of probation. And the probationary period is going to be for 14 months. I'm going to impose a 14-month probationary period. Now, of course, according to Michigan law, that means that Mr. Knutson um, would be eligible for would be eligible for early discharge after the halfway point if he completes the terms and conditions of his probation. So a 14 month probationary period would put us at September of 2024, and then we'll do Friday, September the 20th. If we, if the matter goes to the conclusion of the 14 months, that would be September 20th, 2024, with the following terms and conditions. You shall not violate any criminal law of any governmental unit. Now, I don't remember if I gave you permission to reside in North Carolina. However, if I did not, I am now. You may continue to reside in North Carolina. However, you cannot leave the state of North Carolina without consent of this court. You're not free to travel about the country. You, you have to stay in one place so we know where you are. You are not free to leave the state of North Carolina without consent of the court. You must notify probation immediately of any change of your address, phone number, or employment status, and you will pay the following fines, costs, and fees. I don't have my probation orders right in front of me. Oh, here we go. Yes, I do. All right. You will pay $210 mandatory costs. You will pay a $400 fine. There was no request for restitution. The court sets restitution at this time at zero. You will pay $35 per month supervision fees for a total of, oops, $490 for the entire 14 months. If you get discharged early, you won't be responsible for the supervision fees, for the supervision fees that would have come. If you've already paid, we will reimburse you. If you have not paid those fees in full, then we will, um, 
just waive them. <clears throat> Court is going to impose a $35 pre-sentence investigation and substance abuse evaluation fee. The total fines, costs, and fees Mr. Coleman, um, were you a, a retained or appointed? Retained, yes, Judge, retained. Court is going to impose $1,135. In order to be discharged early at the halfway point, you would have had to pay $890 of that in order to get discharged in seven and a half months. Sir, as a condition of your probation, you shall not use or possess any illegal substance. You shall not use or possess any marijuana. You shall not use or possess any opiates without a valid prescription and letter of explanation from the doctor as to why they have prescribed such an addicting narcotic. You shall not use or possess any alcohol I know this is not an alcohol case. However, everything that is in this report indicates that Mr. Knutson is blaming alcohol and or narcotics on his behavior. Therefore, he shall not consume any alcohol in any form. Um, he shall not drive without a valid license. You shall attend um, or you shall submit to a mental health evaluation. You shall continue in outpatient treatment until the court de determines um, otherwise. You shall attend a 12-step program at least once a week. You shall have no contact with Mr. Michael Anthony Gray. <clears throat> You shall pay any outstanding tickets that you have. According to this report, you don't have any. You shall not drive without a valid license. I, I don't know if I said that already. Um, and according to this report, at least your Michigan license is not valid. You shall submit to random your analysis once a month. Now, let me um, be clear. I know how much it costs in Michigan to get drug test. I know how much it costs in the city of Detroit to get drug tested. I don't know how much it costs in North Carolina to get drug tested. But if 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 the if the North Carolina drug test is $150 a month, that's not my business. The Michigan drug test is like $20 a month, $35 a month, depending on what you get. If their drug test is $150 a month, that's not my business. What I'm saying is you have to submit to your analysis. Now, I do understand that the program he's currently in, he says he's submitting to your analysis. I will accept that, your analysis, but he would have to sign a release so that they could send those results to um, the probation department. Um, please understand, Mr. Knudsen, that probation is the alternative to jail. Jail is the alternative to probation. Uh, clearly, Mr. Gray wants you to go to jail. I don't believe in, in putting people in jail right away on misdemeanors. Again, Mr. Gray, that's the fact that it was charged as a misdemeanor is an issue for Kim Worthy. That, that's an issue for Kim Worthy. Um, but it was charged as a misdemeanor. Uh, so, but let me just indicate, we can't use... Um, we can't use alcoholism and drugs as a reason why we we uh, were were uh, being derogatory towards a person. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's in my heart is what comes out of my mouth. If I'm under the influence of narcotics, I'm not going to start calling you names out of your out of because that's not what's in my heart. That's not what's what's down on the inside of me. If if I'm drunk, if if somebody because I'm never gonna be drunk voluntarily. So if y'all see me drunk, know somebody <laughs> put something in my drink, 
and call the police. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. So I'm never going to be drunk voluntarily. But if somebody causes me to get drunk, I'm not going to start calling them names. I'm not going to start using uh, racial slurs and, and demeaning terms because that's not what's in my heart. So I can't change a person's heart on probation. I can't. We try to change lives in courtroom 339, but it's nothing I could do about what's in the abundance of your heart. But I hope that your road to sobriety and the things that you will learn in the 12-step program, I hope those things will change your heart. Because if, if you're admitting to saying racial things uh, towards Mr. Gray uh, during this situation, that's what's in your heart. That's out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth is speaking. Um, as we think, that's who we are. Things we thinking about, that's, what, that's who we are. So those are things court can't change, but life experience can change, right? So I just hope that you never find yourself in this situation again, Mr. Knutson and Mr. Gray, I hope you never find yourself in this situation again. I, I, I can't apologize for Mr. Knutson and I don't know if you accept his apology, but I don't believe anyone should go through those types of um, situations. And I don't know what I would do if someone was hurling racial slurs towards me. I don't know what I would do. So um, it appears that Mr. Gray did take the high road. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. Only the two of you really know what happened. And even in that, the two of you knowing what happened, your perspectives are different. Your, your perspectives are different. Somebody might have said something and you took it one way and they meant it another way. So people's perspectives are different. So just remember that um, going forward in life. But I do just want to make clear that probation is the alternative to jail. Jail is definitely the alternative to the probation. And therefore, I am expecting you to complete the terms and conditions of your probation. Um, I'm going to give you a halfway review date. And if you have completed the terms and conditions um, on this date that I'm going to give you, you will be eligible for early discharge, eligible for early discharge, eligible for early discharge. That doesn't mean it's going to be, but you're eligible. So if, if we haven't had to pull teeth and and do whatever, then you may get the early discharge if you have completed the terms and conditions of the probation. One, two, three, four, five. The halfway point is February. Um, let's go with February the 23rd, 2024 at 10 o'clock a.m. Now that's when you come to see me, Mr. Knutson, but please understand that you're obligated to check in with probation on a monthly basis. You're obligated to check in with probation on a monthly basis. Sir, we are going to mail a copy of the court's order to the Asheville, strike that, to the Spears Street address. Probation is going to contact you at the phone number ending in 7151. Ending in 7151. Um, again, I'm going to state, I don't know whose windows were busted out but that was not a part of the uh, request or, I mean, they mentioned some windows being busted out in, in the precinct's report, but no one uh, attached ownership to that or nor requested uh, any restitution for that. So right now the court has set restitution at zero. Anything um, further for the uh, court? Judge, not for the judge, judge uh, just very quickly. Uh, there's a uh, anger management, 12 weeks off. Oh, I, I apologize. And I'm so glad you said it verbally because I would have been fussing at him about that anger management because I, because I checked it on my paper, but obviously I didn't say it out of my mouth. So yes, Mr. Knutson also has to attend 12 weeks of anger management. And I don't know if eBay is still doing their anger management um, virtually. So my, this is what I want my order to reflect. I want him to do the anger management in Mr., with Mr. Rice's program through eBay. That's what I want. But if Mr. Rice is no longer doing his classes virtually, then probation can work with Mr. Knudsen to find an anger management program in North Carolina that is acceptable to 36 district court. So it has to be approved. You can't just go do your own because Let's be clear, other than Mr. Rice's program, other than 
Mr. Rice's eBay program that I know works and that I know he actually is conducting, that's the only program I allow online right now. That's the only virtual program I allow. So you can't go sign up for some un online uh, anger management. I'm not going to accept it. it. It has to only be Mr. Rice through eBay and then another program that is approved by 36 District Court that kind of follows along with what Mr. Rice does. The, the program has to be 12 sessions, not one 12 hour course. When, you, when you're doing anger management, you have to go to the class, get some information and then see how that works out in the real world, then come back to the class and talk about it. That's how anger management works. Okay, but thank you for saying it out loud, uh, saying it because I, I, I clearly hadn't said that as a part of my order and I had written it down. And just finally, it, it, there's a 771 that looks like he's eligible. Yes, and I will sentence him under the delayed sentence statute. Thank you again, Your Honor. You're welcome. Anything further? No, thank you, Judge. All right. Then we're all set, Mr. Um, Gray. Have a great day. And Mr. Gray, I'm going to say to you, um, I could clearly see you're angry and I might be too. So I'm not indicating that you don't have a right to be, but I just want you to work on that anger because it, it brings so much devastation on the body. Anger does anger and a lot of stuff. And so don't have a, don't get a hernia of being mad at Mr. Knutson or the police and stuff. Don't do that. Your family needs you. You're working out there. You're trying to take care of your family. If you, if you feel a way about this again, I know you said you wrote a letter to the police, but perhaps um, a letter to Kim Worthy would be appropriate, even though we've already done the sentencing, so that she could be aware of your feelings, okay? All right, everybody have a great, oh, you're talking, but you're not unmuted. You're muted, Mr. Gray. That's okay, you're good. All right, have a great day, stay safe. Thank Mr. you, Judge, you too. All right. You're welcome, I'm thank you're welcome and thank you. Okay. All right, um, Mr. Gopal, good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. How are you today? I'm wonderful, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm getting ready for surgery. Oh, well, Next I week. hope. Okay, I hope I everything's going around as much. Right, well, now, Mr. Gopal, your client is not here. Your Honor, one. I just spoke with him. Okay. He was unable to get on Zoom. He indicated he is appearing in the court and is on his way. Oh, Thank well, um, that's so good. That's what I normally would want. But do you are you aware that there was no pre-sentence report ordered by the felony judge? No, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, in fact, looking at all the paperwork. So I guess we have to order a new. Right. So DSM. I'm glad he, he knows that he should come down to court. But when he gets down there, it's going to be adjourned. Uh, but I, perhaps I understand that, Your Perhaps I could have him go to probation though while he's at the court. So I do I do need a pre-sentence report on a on a drug case. I do. I do. That. I understand that, Your Honor. In fact, this had been adjourned once before because we didn't know, but it appears there was no order. If you want, Your Honor, we no, can wait, put that on the it, record. Did this, now. Come, did this originate from my courtroom and it was no PSIR? Oh no, Your Honor. This came out of Judge, uh, I believe it was Judge Jefferson's court. Oh, oh, I want I, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, they they know the order one on drug and alcohol cases. I, I know. know. And that's what I was surprised at when I kept looking yeah. and okay. reviewing the docket. Would the court want me to? I can contact him and call him. Okay. Why don't you do that? Because I'm going to adjourn it. Okay. And All should right. I direct him to go over the probation? Well, just have him check into my courtroom first and then they'll send him over. Oh, I'll wait till he gets on then. He, okay. Wait till he gets there. Is, okay. is Mr. Morgan here yet? yet? Is he in the courtroom yet? No, Your Honor. Okay. I'll give him a quick call, Your Honor, and find out where he is. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gopal. Now I'll put Thank you back. Thank you, Your Honor. Waiting room. Okay. Ms. Hamilton, I'm ready. Sounds good, Your Honor. All right. And um, um, Buckner. Buckner. Okay.
Oh, before I do Buck, Buckner, can Miss Ritter and Miss Stevenson join me briefly in a breakout room? Uh, let's go to number 10. Yes, Just sir. briefly. I'll be right back, Council. Right back. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Just being patient right there. But I'm ready on Buckner. This is case number two three five seven one four four zero one. The people of the state of Michigan versus Jeffrey um, Lindell Buckner. Defendant is charged with one kind of attempt police officer assaulting, resisting, and obstruct. Today is the day set for sentencing appearances, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Hey, good morning, Your Honor. Vanessa Hamilton, PA2107, on behalf of Mr. Buckner, who is present in your courtroom. Could you say your name for the record, Mr. Buckner? Jeffrey Buckner. All right. Today is the day set for sentencing. And I have had an opportunity to review the pre sentence report. With respect to the pre sentence report, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections on behalf of the people? Judge, I had an opportunity to review the pre-census report. I don't see any additions, deletions, or corrections on behalf of the people. And Your Honor, the defense has reviewed it as well, and I've reviewed it with my client. Um, we have no uh, additions or, or changes either. Right. <clears throat> Then with respect to sentencing, is there anything on behalf of the, uh, I mean, of the people first, the people I'm saying. So judge, um, this did start out as a felony and re was reduced to a misdemeanor as a charge as attempt before this court. There was a plea agreement for one year probation with any additional cost terms and conditions imposed by this court. Um, I did see that uh, the probation's recommendation was for 12 months. So I'm asking the court to adopt that recommendation. Um, I do see the following conditions from probation are that uh, Mr. Buckner have no contact with the complainant, which is Officer Robinson. Judge, I'm going to ask the court just to amend that to no, um, I guess, no assault of contact, Judge, even though this case specifically wasn't assaultive in nature. Um, I'm just asking the court to amend that to no. Um, assaults of contact. Um, I see that probation recommended 12 weeks of anger management, Judge. Again, uh, reading a police description, Judge, I think it'll be better fit if um, Mr. Buckner attended the Choices Program by eBay opposed to anger management in this case, Your Honor. Um, and other than that, Judge, the people have nothing else as far as sentencing. Ask the sentencing on behalf of the defendant. Your Honor, uh, just briefly, we would ask that you follow the sentencing uh, agreement and recommendations made. Um, and for what it's worth, I do see that there's uh, quite a bit in the pre-sentence report about recommending substance abuse testing, um, marijuana intervention program. This wasn't a drug-related case or an alcohol-related case, Your Honor. 